Good morning everyone and welcome to our service for today. This is one of two services that are available on both St Peter's and St Oswald's Facebook pages and websites. There's also a more traditional service of Holy Communion if you would like to join in with that. But this is a service of morning prayer in which we're going to be worshipping God together, reflecting on the Bible reading for today and praying for God's world. So as we begin, let's just spend a moment in quiet together as we recognise that we gather this morning in God's presence. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so as we begin today, we remind ourselves that we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. So let's just spend a few moments in quiet together as we reflect on those ways in which all of us have fallen short of God's purposes for our lives and let us ask God for his forgiveness. And then I'm going to pray a prayer of confession, which you may like to echo in your hearts. God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son, and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now John's going to lead us in a worship song. We're going to sing uh, the song Don't You Know the Everlasting God and the words will be on the screen so please do join in as we sing this song. Strength is renewed. They will. 
those who come to Him in need. He will never turn away. They will rise. They will rise. They will rise. They will run, they will run, they will run and never tire. All things work together for good. is Thank you, John. The reading for today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 35, to chapter 10, verse 8. Jesus went round visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues, preached the good news about the kingdom, and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. As he saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them because they were worried and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, The harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers to gather in his harvest. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Patriot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go to any Gentile territory or any Samaritan towns. Instead, you are to go to those lost sheep, the people of Israel. Go and preach. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Bring the dead back to life. Heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without paying, so give without being paid. Last week in our cafe church service, we were looking at outreach, particularly in uh, lockdown, both for ourselves in the experience we find ourselves in today, but also the experience of the disciples, because they were essentially in lockdown at the time of Pentecost. And how, of course, that experience uh, transformed them in their outreach from a sense of fear to one of boldness.
But in our gospel reading today, we are in a sense thrown back in time, back into Jesus's ministry, back to the, the, the roots really of the disciples for the very first time being sent out. And that passage that I've just read is a pivotal passage in Matthew's gospel and in the way that he writes his gospel. If we take a sort of overarching view of, of how Matthew uh, wrote his gospel, we see that at the very beginning, he obviously talks about Jesus' birth and the beginning of his adult ministry with the call of the first disciples. And then in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Matthew writes this. Jesus went all over Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news about the kingdom and healing people who had all kinds of disease and sickness. And if you were noticing carefully as I read the passage that uh, I read a few minutes ago, that passage also began with that same verse. In fact, Matthew repeats that verse. And there's a sense in which that verse seems to be acting as bookends to a section of Matthew's gospel. He uh, writes that at the end of chapter four, and then in chapters five to nine, in a sense, he expands on that single verse because he has said that Jesus' ministry has three aspects to it. It is teaching in the synagogues. It is preaching the good news about the kingdom and it is healing. And then in chapters five to nine, Matthew gives us lots of examples of how Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount, how he preached and how he performed various healings. And then at the end of chapter 9, we have the same verse repeated as it began our reading. And it's a summary, really, of all that Jesus has done up to that point before Matthew is about to move on to the next section of his gospel. And the next few verses are, in a sense, a link between that first section and what is to come. Because having told us that Jesus taught and preached and healed, Jesus then says to his disciples, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send out workers into his harvest field. It's as if Jesus is saying there is so much that needs to be done. There's a sense in which he's almost saying, I can't do all of this on my own. And it needs more people to do what I have been doing. Sometimes, because of the, the way in which our Bibles are divided up between chapters, we can lose the link sometime between the chapters because there's an that is the end of chapter nine before it appears that perhaps we go on to something completely different in chapter 10. But in fact, we don't. Because having asked the disciples to pray to God the Father to send workers out into the harvest field, Jesus then gathers them together and sends them out. It's as if, of course, that the prayer that he's asked them to pray is not just a prayer, but one that they need to respond to themselves. And Jesus actually gives them authority and sends them out to do exactly what he has done to talk, to teach and to preach and heal. And from uh, the way in which this story is recorded in the other Gospels, we see that that would seem to be a highly successful mission of the disciples as they went round healing people in Jesus's name. But it also seems clear that, of course, their path of discipleship with Jesus was not one of what we might call permanent upward trajectory. There were ups and downs in it, both before Pentecost and after Pentecost. Well, what has all of that got to do with us? It might, on first hearing, all appear to be perhaps just a little bit academic in terms of why does Matthew write his gospel in that way and what relevance has that got for us but I think if we sort of reflect on it a bit it's actually quite interesting in, her, in terms of how that relates to our lives because of course the events that Matthew was talking about were events that he was uh, party to himself he was one of those 12 disciples that I mentioned in our reading Matthew the tax collector and now of course Several years after those events that Matthew, is, uh, Matthew mentions, he is now writing the story of what happened. But of course, he's writing it from the perspective uh, in which he finds himself a few years down the track. He's not just telling the events of what happened back then, but he's writing it 
from his new found perspective. He's begun to understand what God's purposes were for his life when he was called by God. Now, I don't think that when Matthew was living through these events that I've just read, that he understood them in the way that he came to understand them when he wrote his gospel. He didn't realise that all the time God had a purpose in Jesus' ministry in teaching, preaching and healing, and that the purpose was that the 12 disciples would be called, they would be uh, given authority by Jesus and sent out and do to do exactly what Jesus has done. And then one day they would receive the spirit and go to the ends of the earth. Matthew had no concept at that time that that was what was going to happen. It was only with the hindsight that he was able to understand with God's perspective what had happened in his life. And I think that's interesting for us as we as it were, journey through our lives. The difference between the experience that we may have at any given point and the perspective that we have subsequently, when perhaps we understand in a way that we didn't originally what God's purposes may have been. I wonder if you look back on your life, whether you can think of times when you really had no idea what was going on. And perhaps you felt very alone uh, and not in a good place. And yet, perhaps, maybe, subsequently, maybe many years down the line, perhaps you have a slightly different perspective on what actually happened in that time. And maybe we can perhaps see, even in the dark times, how God's hand may have been at work in our lives. And that may be true for us at the moment. In the experience that we have, what we come to understand in future times, what we are going through now may be very different from how we feel about it now. All of that reminds me of a famous uh, poem, which some of you may be aware of, called Footprints, in which someone is looking back on their lives and they look back from look back in it. But all that they can see is that they were alone and it's as if they journeyed through life walking a solitary path along a beach. And as they look back, all they saw was their footprints. And when they asked God about this, God replied, those were not your footprints, but mine, because I was carrying you at that time. A very different perspective, maybe from the one that certainly the person in that, in that poem has, but maybe a very different one from the perspective that we may have in our lives today. So I'd like to encourage us to uh, take heart, as it were, from Matthew's experience uh, in that gospel reading. We know that the disciples in many ways floundered in their understanding of who Jesus was and what his call on their lives was. But they came to have a new perspective of how God had called them and how God calls us. God calls you. God calls me. But it takes time for us to grow in our understanding of what that call is. May God help us to uh, journey with him to grow in our understanding of his call on our lives. Amen. And now Sean from St Oswald's is going to lead us in our prayers. Hello, I'm Sean Hegarty and I'm one of the church wardens from St Oswald's. I'm going to lead us now in our time of prayer. So let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Heavenly Father, we bring to you in your splendour and your majesty our prayers for today. We open our hearts and our minds to your word and your everlasting love and praise you for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for this day which you have created, giving thanks for all the goodness that surrounds us as we carry out whatever tasks we have to do for ourselves, our families, our neighbours, our friends, for other people and for you, our God. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we find ourselves in volatile times, 
as your world comes together to battle against an invisible enemy in the coronavirus. We pray that the people of the earth will continue to come together in unity and peace as we face these uncertain and unprecedented times. We pray for the continued healing of the world as we have started to see the fogs of pollution to lift and the wildlife to return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church around the world and in particular the parishes of St Oswald's and St Peter's here in the Diocese of Bristol. We ask that church leaders, bishops and synods are given the wisdom and the courage to take us forward, showing those who may not yet know you the joy and the hope that you bring to all our lives. We pray for the children and the youth who are such an important part of the church family and who have been away from their friends, which is particularly difficult for them. We pray for the Sunday club leaders who give so much time and dedication to their role. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We also pray for the world leaders, including our own Queen and the Prime Minister, that they may also be granted the wisdom to lead us away from harm and to be in unity and in peace. Lord, in, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pause now as we quietly pray for all those who are in need right now, whether through grief, physical or mental illness, redundancy, or any one of the other ways in which people's lives have been turned upside down over the recent days and months. And we remember all who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our one true God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and for showing us your love. Amen. Thank you, Sean. We're going to continue in prayer now as I'm going to pray the special prayer for today and then lead us as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We're going to close our service by joining uh, in the song, Come People of the Risen King. John's going to lead us and the words will, be on the words will be on the screen. So please do join in as we sing, Come People of the Risen King.
is perfect love will never change and his mercy is